Uh, you've got Burrow on later. There's no question he's number one overall unless you think somebody's going to do a YOLO Ditka trade or you're hearing anything like that at all or this is just uh, this is just a formality with Burrow. Well, you know, here's the thing. You never know when they're telling you the truth <laughs> when they send out the smoke signals that they're not going to trade the pick or the Dolphins aren't going to trade up for the pick. I mean, if anybody trades up, it's going to be the Dolphins, right? The Dolphins have been doing their homework on Joe Burrow. The Bengals have done all their homework on Joe Burrow. And Brian Flores, the coach of the Dolphins, can say all he wants, that they don't want to make the investment necessary to move up. And Chris Greer, the GM of the Dolphins, can say the same thing. And the Bengals can say, we're not going to trade this pick. We're using this pick. And then you make an offer to the Bengals that they can't refuse and that they recognize they shouldn't refuse. And frankly, all due respect to the Bengals, that's one of the wild cards here. Will they know when they've been given an offer that they can't and shouldn't refuse? But if Stephen Ross, the owner of the Dolphins, Rich, swoops in, and I've tried to think of the most delicate way to put this, Mm -hmm. but Ross is either 80 or close to it. You get the Leon Hess dynamic at some point where you say, look, in my lifetime, I want to have a franchise quarterback. And we have squandered draft picks time and again over the course of my ownership of the team. So what if we have to throw another pick or two onto the pile to get the Bengals to say yes to this? And if they're doing that behind the scenes, they're not going to tell us that. That's my point. It looks the same from our perspective. If it's happening or if it's not happening. So if if anything happens with Joe Burrow other than him going to the Bengals, it's going to be out of the blue at some point in the next three days a trade is done, and it shocks us just like when the Falcons moved up to number one with the Chargers 19 years ago to get Mike Vick. Well, I mean, uh, just uh, I looked it up. Stephen Ross is 80 in about three weeks' time, and a great reference of the old Jets owner, Leon Hess, um, who, you know, I just had flashbacks of uh, Kotite and things like that um, that I need to just get through for the moment. But uh, you make a very valid point, Mike, in that the Dolphins need to do it and do it now um in many ways but why wouldn't that still be Tua? what are you what are you hearing right now and you want to talk about smokes and screens my gosh you're either hearing two has fallen because nobody really believes his medical until they can actually put their hands on him or they're just saying all that because they think he's as special as everybody thought he was the minute he looked off a of safety against georgia what, what do you think about that mike one last thing about Burrow and Ross, because it dovetails with the Tua stuff. Sure. I caught wind very early on in the process that Ross absolutely loves and covets and wants Burrow, and I heard it in a way that passed through my BS filter, because yeah. when it comes to pre-draft rumors, your BS filter has to be extremely thick and very selective. When I started hearing, for example, Rich, that Tua – is potentially going to slide out of the top 10, my first thought was, well, the team that's holding the 11th overall pick is putting this out there. Because that happens. If you love a guy, you put bad stuff out there in the hopes that he slides down the draft and you can draft him. If you don't like a guy, you put out all sorts of good stuff so some sucker out there picks the guy that you don't want anyway and it pushes someone that you do want farther down the board. But I started hearing from way too many people that two is going to slide out of the top 10. Now, all it takes is one team. But I've heard from too many people that he's going to slide because the doctors employed by the teams cannot put their hands on Tua, cannot personally observe him. And the teams are concerned, Rich, that the doctors who are accountable to us can't tell us everything's fine. We don't care if the doctor that has been treating Tua for the last three years says he's fine because, of course, he's going to say he's fine. And there are different definitions of what is and what isn't fine. The doctor that's been treating Tua for the last three years could testify under oath and pass a polygraph test Mm. that he thinks or she thinks that Tua is fine. But the team doctors are the ones that ultimately have their ongoing ability to work for those teams riding on the accuracy of their assessments. And without that ability to check out that hip, without that ability to check out whatever else on him may not be 100% it's going to be hard for someone to pull the trigger. And I'll repeat what a GM told me back when Tua got hurt. Mm -hmm. Three years in college football, three lower body injuries, and you're talking about a much greater degree of physicality and roughness, and you have to assume that that trend is going to continue when he gets to the NFL. And for a guy who's fairly mobile, that's not a good sign. So I feel bad for him that he can't get properly checked out ahead of time, but those are the circumstances, and I think it could result in him sliding out of the top ten. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.